Yeah, that has been really curious. And uh, so with the Rexar at the board, the Callist is also taken away. Mm -hmm. So some power picks in several of these roles, but I'm curious to see what they prioritize. Origin, come back around to them. Urgot's open, Cassiopeia is open, mm -hmm. Azir is open, so we can still... The third ban on purple side is something I always really watch out for, because that spells out how both teams kind of have and will play the champ select. So let's see how that turns out. That will be the key thing. Thresh is now the ban. They've chosen not to let Kasing have that. So we're K has one more to go. I talked to Miffy and he really rated that Thresh and Alistair very highly. So both of these champions are out. So we're going a tier lower on the support list and that might actually open up mm -hmm. Bard. Well, with the Urgot banned away, we may possibly see it. I think the Morgana might be very popular too because, you know, well, it's been shown to be a very popular flex pick. So far, Gragas looks to be the first pick up and it is Origin that take that one for amazing. Yeah, I wonder what H2K is going to answer it. Lulix, very good game yesterday on Rex. I uh, valued it over Gragas, actually, if I recall correctly. So both Rex and Gragas out. That leaves Sejuani and Evelyn as jungles left. Not really sure what Lulix is going to be kind of both. Sejuani is a little slower. You can get punished early. Uh, yesterday we saw Elements play Sejuani and got to level 6 for free. And you see how devastating that can be. On the other hand, we've seen in the past Sejuani's get punished really hard. And then it can get a little rough. It's all about how you execute it, too. And knowing H2K, their profile, of course, they always want to go for getting ahead in the game and starting these fights and skirmishes off 10 to 20 minutes in. We can expect their compositions to go that way. But you know, I don't, think, I don't think he's really worried about this game. He yeah. seems a, a little calm, a little laid back, if you will. Yeah, or he didn't get enough sleep because he was obviously preparing out. And I really all like night. this. I really like the Saber pickup. With Urgot and Kalista uh, out of the equation, Ash gone, too. I really like the Saber Maokai. This gives you so much um, flexibility in champs like this could mean, you know, a storm in the front, all in with a Sivir ulti, uh, basically diving composition, but you can still do anything. You can lane swap with Sivir, you can lane 2v2 in certain matchups, so definitely interesting to see what Origin is going to reply with. Yeah, that will be curious indeed. They'll have to be able to break through the front line, whatever it is. That is Origin, I mean, since H2K, yeah. I, I feel like they can go a lot of different ways, but I would expect that, that run at you kind of composition, if they can pull it off. Origin now, Looking to get a little bit more firepower on their hands if they do lock this one in for the Annie and the LeBlanc. And we got one, we got the other. So yeah, I've always been talking about Azir and Cassiopeia being like this duo top tier mid picks, but it seems a lot of the European mid laners value LeBlanc in there, if not over both champions. Um, it's blind pick too. Yeah, blind pick LeBlanc. She does well in a lot of matchups, uh, but let's see what Ryu answers with. You, Ryu has played Ari into LeBlanc in the past too, so could be an option. He has indeed, cycling through quite a lot right now. So he waits on his time. He doesn't have to pick it right now either, importantly. Um, if he does want to go for that Morgana counter pick, he would probably still be fine to wait on it since the Annie's already been locked in. But I feel like that's not necessarily a Ryu champion. Yeah, not necessarily it says Ryu to you, but they could flex a Morg here, pick something else, and then leave, uh, leave it up in the air where it goes mid and support. Not necessarily the best choice. Miffy going here for Annie. We haven't seen too much of Annie, but I, I like Annie Just against split. The top tier two mids that I was talking about, I like Annie against Cassiopeia. Flash Tibbers can shut her down. Immediate follow up from Gragas can be really devastating. In addition, on Azir as well, that might prompt Ryu to pick something else. Yeah, well, he will wait till his last pick to go ahead and take that one. They lock in the Evelyn. There's right. another Evelyn pickup here in the summer split. And a Janna. I actually really like this in H2K's composition. I'm actually going to disagree with you. I feel when you play Sivir and you send in everybody forward, right? Everybody's storming in the front. Sivir is really good at dealing with, with carries on her own. She survives on her own pretty well because she has spell sheets. She has all this crazy mobility. You generally don't want to peel for a Sivir too much. You just let her use Boomerang Base, Bouncing Blades in the fight, the AoE. She runs around and then you can use your support as an offensive tool. Go, this is like a mismatch, you know. Maokai's going in, Evelyn's going in, but Janna's going back and peeling. Oh, you for mean a, with the Janna? Yeah, for for a Sivir, and I'm not sure if I like yeah. it too much. I do like. The I, Evelyn. I was talking about the Evelyn, yes, but ah. I, I think you're right. The Janna's a little bit weird. Doesn't maybe really they just work want out. More lane sustained. Yeah, maybe they're playing playing for a secure lane. Uh, maybe they're they don't have any other answers for any left, you know, since both Alistar and Thresh are out. But in terms of composition, I want to see how this plays out. Well, we'll see how Origins plays out. We've got a Vayne lock in. It looks like as well. As a rumble, so Origins comp is completed. This no, is not yet. Interesting. They're still deciding. Wait a minute. They're still deciding. Wait, I, oh, got reset. Okay. I'm not sure if they're going for this Vayne. Vayne uh, is actually decent to the Sivir because she can tumble out of the Boomerang Blade and return some damage. And the triple Silver Bolt's proc doesn't really get spell shielded, so Vayne has a way of doing a lot of damage on Sivir. But she's very short range into a Maokai. And yeah, Evelyn can basically catch up to her. However, there's no support catch potential here. So that might actually prompt uh, Niels to actually lock in this Vayne. 
Yeah, I'm definitely taking the time about it, so thinking if that's what they want to go into. Wait for that one to count down. Looks like we're uh, popping out for just a second. Slight technical issues, so uh, just looking at what we have so far. We'll just yeah. speculate on that, because assuming Origin does lock that in, how does that fit into the rest of their comp? You talked about it a little bit, but expound on it a little bit for me. I think what we see here again is that I've if I remember correctly, Origin was playing only only one tank yesterday. Again, they really want Soros on these carries. Soros going for Rumble here. I think he played the same champion yesterday. It's a little hard to play sometimes. We've seen a lot of teams go for these double tank compositions because it's just so easy to play, so straightforward, really good for controlling objectives. And we saw one tank composition punished yesterday, if we recall Rocket. They had Jankos and I believe Gragas. Enemy team basically, uh, it was H2K actually, focused them down over and over and over in fights and then switched to the other targets. And it's going to get rough for, for Origin. At the, at the other hand, they have a lot of damage, though. They do have a lot of damage. And if they can get catches on H2K, it can be really, really rough for that team. Now, quick catch up with you guys, just in case you're wondering what's happening. There was a little bit of an issue with champs like Singh was unable to lock in his last champion. Mm -hmm. So we will uh, pick back up from where that point was. All the same picks should be the same up until then. But uh, we'll redo that, that, that last portion of it. So yeah, we'll definitely still have a very similar composition. Um, but the vein, not a guaranteed lock in. Yeah, I want to actually take a step back there and look look at the Janna pick again, and I want to reiterate that it's going to be interesting to look at. It. H2K's composition so far is safe. You know, Maokai is very tanky. They have a lot of mobility from Sivir. They don't have the most hard CC, so they have the Maokai will have to be the one engaging, or Evelyn will have to get around the enemies and get a good flying, because there's no engage component on the support for H2K, whereas Origin has that anti flash Tibbers they can use. So it's going to get rough for H2K to engage, especially with Maokai being so uh, so so binary, you know, all in or fine. Yeah, well, it looks like H2K's comp is, is pretty set up to be that way, with the exception of the Janna. Now, a little bit of extra information. Uh, again, it's going to be the exact same picks for Origin and all the way up to Kasing for H2K. So since he didn't have his final lock-in, yeah. we go all the way to that. So yeah, everything's just about the same. We'll see what H2K do choose as their pickup for Ryu. But yeah, Origin's composition. This is, this is interesting because I feel like they have a lot of, like, miniature power spikes in the beginning and in the late, but a lot of it comes together in the middle of the game. And if they don't hit that, if they don't utilize that to try and contest objectives, which is where HK is typically a very strong team, historically, that could be troublesome for them. And, well, we'll see HK pick up some scaling of their own in the cast. Yeah, a lot of damage, not so much peel though. The only peel here really is Gragas' explosive cast. Uh, and then Vayne has to basically take care of herself against a, a massive, basically, Zerg comp from H2K. Again, they may be able to survive since Janna doesn't offer too much offensive threat, and that might be why Neil's locked in that vein. But a lot of damage coming out of Origin right here. You know, if Rumble lands his combo, LeBlanc lands, his, like, lands, lands her chains, and meanwhile, Vayne is proccing Silver Bolts left and right, this could mean disaster for H2K if they don't take smart fights. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, the LeBlanc for Origin. I'm really curious to see how this matchup in the mid lane will go, especially because you, if you were to go back a year or two years ago, if you had said Peke and Ryu going up against each other, was in a matchup, that would that would instantly be the feature highlight. That would be what everyone would be looking towards. I want to see if both these guys still got it. We've seen Ryu stepping up uh, a lot more. We saw that a lot in the playoffs, a number of solo kills. And of course, everybody knows Peke. Everybody knows what he's capable of. I want to see how this matchup goes in the mid. But I know you want to talk a little bit about the bot lane. Yeah, but I want to reiterate on your point, one short sentence here. I do know that you will never uh, rule out x -Peke again, because I did that once. I did it before Worlds. I was like, yeah, x -Peke, he's all right, you know, but he isn't his former self. And then he showed up to basically destroy some mid lanes in, in that World Championship. Yep. And it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, you've heard from us. What do you guys think? Do you think Origin's going to take this one or H2K? You know what to do. At LOL Esports is the handle. Hashtag OG win or H2K win. And we are starting up on the Rift. But you were right, though. I really like these two bot lanes because I respect Kasing and Miffy as supports a lot because they're both really strong in lane as well as out of lane. It's going to be interesting if they choose to go for the 2v2. I think both lanes have something that speaks for 2v2 and against it. You kind of don't want to let the Vayne free farming. At the same time, it's double range against double range. And that's always an interesting matchup to, to see because it's, very, it's less all-in heavy. It's more poke heavy. Absolutely. We'll see how this game starts off the board. So. Everything looks relatively normal, line of scrimmage to start things off. So no shenanigans for either of those teams just yet. Ryu does take a little bit of damage from Mithy. So we have a little bit of switch around there. Mithy's uh, subbing in middle for a second for Xpaki, who's waiting in this brush for Kasing. Let's see if he takes some damage there. Fanatic Janna versus Peke. Don't tribute to the king. Yeah. There we go. I think that shield was late. Just a little Actually bit. Actually took the damage. 
Sports have four portions. Who cares, anyways? Hey, it's all about forcing little edges. Your little edges, indeed. Damage adds up, Crepo. Yeah, it, it does indeed. That's true. Uh, looking at the jungle pick for Amazing here, Gragas, we've seen some Gragas players get creative with their roots. Either clear one side, three camps, two camps, and then get a, a nice little cheesy early Maybe gank on, on one of the sides of mid lane on top lane. Let's see if Amazing goes for that. Or go for this full clear. Or, third option, he wants to punish perhaps Lulex in jungle because Evelyn goes pretty low on first clear. Mm hmm. And, you know, early on in the game, the very first clear, that's like when you can usually predict where Jungle's going to be going. They've also got a couple of deep wards. You see Origin mm -hmm. popping down one over by the red side, or the red buff, rather, of H2K. And uh, since nobody's going to be there, they know what side of the map Evelyn's starting on. Yeah, and it looks like the lane swap is predicted here. I don't know who initiated it or, or who called it, but both teams are heading up in the top lane. No camps. I really like watching laning phases like this without camps. This should give the push advantage to Sivir, though. There's no way Annie and uh, Vayne can clear that without a camp. They basically want to poke back and let the lane push back as far as they can, because if they challenge the push, they will only get in more troubles later. I almost feel like Hjarn's over-pushing a little bit. I think Niels is happy with this. Yeah, I think Niels will definitely be happy with the way this has started. He also was able to get a little bit of damage onto Yarn and to start this yeah. one off. Uh, it's it's going to be so hard to push against the Sivir in general, especially sped up by a Janna. Mithy steps forward. He takes a whole heaping helping of damage. He should be yeah. okay for now. He's just nibbling away at the Biscuits. Yeah, trading damage on... Oh, that's a good trade. Trading damage on support uh, on the AD carry and taking damage on support is definitely what you want. You know, support has way more sustain than an enemy AD carry. The lane's pushing in here. Niels will... F we'll have to see how well Niels farms on the tower because it's... You're always playing under pressure, right? But we'll see how this turns out later. Let's take an eye uh, and see how the rest of the map is going. Yeah, so while this one gets a little bit more normal, we'll set it up in the mid lane where Peke and Ryu have already been trying to duke each other out here. Level 3 for Peke. He's pushing a wave into Rio, and you know, this is going to be the rough start for Kasten. He's always going to have a little bit more trouble to start things off, but he is still keeping up with the damage. Amazing. Looking around the side, see if he stops to clear Crab. Looks like he will. And of course, Lulex is on his back right now, so no jungle help going to come to this mid lane just yet. The bottom lane continues to be a wet middle fight. Yeah, you see Amazing there, very healthy after clearing his jungle and the Crab, and he can immediately move in, whereas Lulex on Evelyn was forced to base and come back in. If Amazing reads this properly, he might be able to spot Lulex in the jungle or go for a dive here. Looks like that might be the chosen strat. Heke waits, there it goes! It's gonna be Ryu forced to burn his flash. Ignite taking away his health, but he should stay alive through that one. I I think the body slam missed by an inch. The damage didn't carry over, and otherwise Ryu would have been dead. This was really, really close, guys. And you know, it was really nice bait, too, from Heke. He backs away, and it just, oh, no, it's okay. Nothing's really happening. Nothing's really happening at all. And he doesn't really vary his style at much to do it. He just backed away as if, he'd done, as if he was done and he was going to... Head to base. Now, Lulex he has, the has found Amazing. Yeah. He has the information. Amazing has no idea that he's spotted. He sees the warp. It is really big. Now, Amazing knows that every action was happening with the knowledge of H2K. So that means however people reacted, that was with, they knew where he was. But in the bot lane, so was his turning on the Flame Sweeper. Yep, he does turn that one on. As everybody who's played Pokemon knows, fire is strong against grass. Yes. So are towers, apparently. <laughs> That one, I don't expect too much action to happen down there for a while until the teams really want to start looking at Dragon, but since we have the dual lane swap happening, I think it probably is going to take a while before that happens. We'll see. Teleport spent down to the bottom. Otawamne gets back to base after picking up another Doran's. Lulex now on a roam upriver. Take a look at what they do together, but also let's take a look back to mid because there is a massive CS differential. We said Kasten has a rough laning phase, and that is making it rougher. Yeah, while the gank was successful, it, it, it did mean a lot of pressure on Ryu here, but Lulex, he's hiding in the bush. Will Neil spot that in time? I don't think so. They're trying to make it look very easy for Niels to push forward, but I, I think he knows something's up. He's gonna check really close. to Lulex, Mithy's the one who does it. Hate Spike's flying. The Kadem against the wall will stop the Evelyn for the time being as Niels returns fire onto Kasing. Yeah, and, it, and this is where it all becomes really rough. You don't want to change like the pattern you have been laning in so far because if you suddenly start playing differently, good players will obviously smell the gang. That's why H2K was leaning back a lot, but that results and when Miffy checks the brush, not too much damage goes on to Sing here. Yeah. Speaking of smelling the gang, Ryu knows exactly what's up. He saw Amazing in the side. Arnon, he's stunned up. Spell Shield comes in too late. He has to flash his Ignite. Meanwhile, back to the middle. Ryu, oh so low, he finally burns down. It's Amazing who gets the kill and barely gets out alive. Body slam back to tower. 
Yeah, really, really good aggression here from OG. They managed to stun Yon in there before his spell shit pops, get the ignite up before the heal, reduces, forces the flash in turn, and now they can push in this lane and Niels, while he was down in CS earlier, he will deny so many creeps here, and this is really crucial. Origin is playing this very, very well. They are indeed. Now, Odawamne looks to check in on to Soaz. Doesn't really find too much damage. Lulex inbound as well to help Odawamne out. Soaz got to know something's up now, and they're looking for a revenge kill after the first blood. Flash for Flash, Ooh. but Lulex wasn't on the same page he is now. He goes in, and he picks up the kill while Odawamne takes the tower. And I think this is definitely the right lane for Odawamne, uh, for Lulex to gank, rather. Having the Twisted Advance on Maokai allows you to actually lock a target down. However, when we saw earlier, he was ganking a double range lane without any hearts to see on his side, and we, talk, we talked about it earlier, Pyrite and Champs, like, Janna doesn't have much engage potential, right? And that really didn't work out. But let's see that mid lane ganking here. Good chain from Peke. No more flash on Ryu. Body slam and a barrel. And then, yeah, he just drops dead. Slowly, slowly fading away. Nice pick up in the mid lane. And we might see part two in just a moment. Peke backs away. Avoids the Force Pulse. Too well, bad you can't avoid the Force Pulse. Nah. Not when he's right next to you. Exactly. Amazing and mythy now. They've swapped the lanes back up. Right? Yeah. This is, I, th I feel like this is just to get the dragon control back in their favor. And they're saying that they're confident so as can keep Yarnin off this tower. Look at the damage from that flame spitter. Yarnin had no mana to really return fire on that. Yeah, he has no summoners either, so he has to be very careful. Origin is playing as well. Their resource memory is really good. But here's Oduana. Yep, he zooms on in. Beeline towards Mithy, amazing now having to body slam away, but now Niels is here and H2K are turning and running. Yarn and meanwhile is burning away as Soaz outplays him in the 1v1. H2K in full retreat as Peke jumps over the wall. They decide to turn their attention to blue. Origin, they're doing everything right all across the map. Yeah, we said this earlier in the pregame. We want Origin to be more aggressive. If they play the same passive style, H2K from the 10 to 20 minute mark, they'll get ahead. But Origin, they got their foot on the gas pedal and they're so far ahead already. Yeah, let's take a look at that. It all started with a big equalizer and Soaz kept on chasing. Yeah, just saw a play and this reiterates that at the highest level, kills are often a two-step process. One, forcing the gank and the pressure to blow the summers and then returning to finish your job. Amazing did it first. Got rid of Rio's flash in the middle lane, came around again, killed him. On the top lane, Niels with, and Mithy with a really good stun on Kjarn and forced the flash and the summoner. And Soas, because we're tracking cooldowns on the highest level here, he knew that turn on the, uh, the equalizer and basically just roasted Kjarn. Absolutely. Completely cooked him alive. And speaking of cooking alive, Ryu is starting to feel the heat from Peke seriously down in this match in CS. 25 separating these two. And it's been a lot of jungle pressure. Ryu has still not picked up a catalyst. Yeah, he's very far behind. At the same time, Gyarnan was forced to go for Pickaxe as well. In a Vayne matchup, that's a, exactly what you want as a Vayne. You don't want to let the enemy AD carry get a B of Sword, because you have this weird Cutlass build that gives you a lot of lifesteal and attack speed, but doesn't give you much raw damage. So in terms of one auto attack, one, one auto attack trades, you lose out a lot if the enemy has a BF. But if it's just a Pickaxe, you can sustain that up. We saw that yesterday as well in a Rocket matchup where uh, Woolite had his Pickaxe and he was facing a, a Vamp Scepter on the other side, and it just, he couldn't he couldn't widen the gap anymore. And this is really good for Origins bot lane right now. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, we talk about H2K and what they do from 10 to 20 minutes, but Origins not keen on letting it be an even playing field by the time it gets to that point. We're not quite at that 10 minute mark. Mithy now roaming down to the bottom side. He's spotted by Odawamne, who's a little slow to react, but that is because Yarnin on the hunt, coming on in, and now Odawamne chases in, throws down the Twisted Advance, and the Maelstrom, they're looking for Mithy, but a stun's up. Yarnin will find it with a boomerang and kneels all by himself. The hate spikes were flying, the poison was ticking, wasn't quite enough, and Lulex goes down, courtesy of the tower. This is, that this is the third time I've seen H2K be a little hesitant on following up on each other. They didn't know Lulex was going for the dive. If we go back to the real play yesterday, Odawamne was a little hesitant. Go back to earlier when they killed Rumble as well. Odawamna was a little hesitant there as well. H2K is not fully in sync yet. Oh, they are not. Origin, on the other hand, fully working like a well-oiled machine. Ten and a half minutes on the clock. They've already amassed themselves their first dragon and a few hundred gold in the lead. Not too shabby. Gold lead went down to 500 from 1,000 earlier. But, uh, Soaz is looking for a little gank here. Pick is warming up. Odawamna spots it, though. He knows exactly what's up. I don't think he knows. Uh, uh, now he, he does. Knows. Yeah. There's the sapling. Who face checks? Brave sacrifice. It is important to remember to remember the sacrifices of the saplings. Indeed it is. 
And the Scuttle Crabs. And right. the Scuttle Crabs. That's a story for another Poor, poor Scuttle Crabs. All right. So the bot lane's pushing out. Amazing coming in. He's going to spot that pink ward, clear it. So that's good for pressure. They want to find Blue Ice. Origin wants to know where Evelyn is, and then they can make calculated plays. Some aggression going on in the mid lane. Basic trade. Peke, huh? taking a bet with that one. Mm -hmm. Looked for a moment like it wasn't going to go that way, but... Peke has consistently been on the up and up versus Ryu. Lulex now going to find amazing, amazing over by the blue. Wow. Now that's one game of chicken. Yeah, but the chicken's invisible, so Amazing's losing out on information here. He's going to go back in for a little bit more, see if he can find something. The Gromp started up by Yarnin and Kasing. They back away as the ward goes down. So now he's just trying to hackle H2K's bot lane as Niels and Mithy continue to push up. Yeah, level 6 on Mithy has Tibbers prompted and ready. A good spell shield will be needed, or otherwise it's going to be a real luck. It's 3v3, but Origin don't quite know it yet. Tower, however, going very, very low. The minion wave is going to be cleared out. Kasing helps push Niels back, and they will take the safe play. For now, Ryu, not quite too much damage on it, but Peke goes back in for round number two. Lands the chains, but there's the rift walk. See, but you say they don't know it, but it's likely to expect that Lux is going to be hovering around that bot lane, because... Uh, Amazing spend a lot of time there. Top lane's really not gankable. Mid lane's really hard to gank, so it's very likely that Evelyn's are down in the bot lane. Right, and you know, when you play as many games as these guys, you've got to have that game sense available to know when that's happening. These guys definitely have now a teleport for Soaz. Lulex is going to spot that one up as Amazing throws out the big barrel. They were looking for Yarnin, but he threw down the spell shield and equalizer. Oh, Mass has tipped him as well. They found it. The monsoon will keep Lulex alive just barely, but Niels finds one. Can he do another? Condemn against the wall. So as double kill. Soaz looking for more. Turns tail and runs. Whoever's the Tower was there. They forsook him, and it was a two for one. And this is why I think Miffy's such a good player. Really clutch, two man tivers, basically securing the kills for Origin here, and then a little bit too deep under the tier two tower. But you know, that happens. Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes you can get a little bit too aggro. So in the end, they trade two for one. Origin now, decent and job the in the bottom. Yes, and the, importantly, the tower. They're, they're definitely they're sitting on one tower here, one dragon against H2K's one tower, zero dragons. They have a 2,000 gold lead here, and they're scaling into the mid game. And you mentioned it earlier, they definitely want to spike and get a lot of, make use of how much damage they have in the mid game and see if they can translate that into objectives. Let's see again. Luix knows the TP is coming. He's basically hovering in between dragons and rubble to not get spotted. Kiaran, good spell shield. Kasing's going out. They can't disengage. And look, look at that, Tibbers. So as basically burning them alive. Kasing turns around rubble with his ultimate, but it's not enough. Yeah, it, honestly. That Monsoon is pretty much the only reason that that was a triple kill for Vayne right there. Yeah, I think the Monsoon could have been a little earlier. Ryu picks up a kill, and that's, that's pretty good for uh, H2K then, though. If you want to kill on one person on H2K, it is definitely on Kassen. He is the carry of this team. Sivir is a utility AD carry. Maokai, Peel, Tank, Engage. Definitely all the damage in the late game fights is coming from Ryu. Yeah, I mean, anything I can get for him is great, because at this point, he's still behind 45 CS. Peke has just been giving him a hell of a time this game. They'll finally grab a little bit more back, but now Origin can turn their full attention to this mid lane. And yeah, while I was always praising Miffy for being such a good laner back in the day when I was playing against him in the LCS, right now, he, he's just playing... He's roaming so much, he hasn't been in lane at all. He's showing up left and right and basically facilitating the engage and making sure Lulex can't get into that river like he wants to. Speaking of the river, Soaz and Peke are coming from that. They target Kasing, half his health is gone. Meanwhile, rest of Origin over at the Dragon. They've got Scuttle Crab Shrine, and it is an easy take for them. But H2K are pushing on the top in response. Yeah. Every time we talk about this, objective gets taken on one side of the map. You want to look for what they call the cross map objective. But H2K might not be in time because they're getting greedy. They want the tower and the blue buff. And they do. They've left out Owamne to just push this one. But the rest of Origin should be able to come back and push him off in time. Ryu secures that blue buff. Lulex is there as well. But they don't have enough firepower to polish it off. So in the end, Origin come out ahead here. They've got themselves 2,000 gold in the lead. They did steal the Bong's blue buff, and that might give him Ryu just that little bit of breathing room he needs to get into the mid to late game. But Origin are already here on the other blue buff side. Amazing has started this one off. The thing is, can Peke, can Peke really get there in time if Ryu wants to contest this? I, I don't think they really know this is happening just yet because they're not making moves for it. Yeah, if the buff resets a couple of times, then Becky can pick it up. There you Good go. guy, amazing. Just using, those, using those game mechanics to stall it out. So in the end, they trade that one. Yeah, Origin really not giving much up for what they're taking here. H2K aren't incredibly behind, but this is traditionally the point of the game when they're at their strongest. And right now, they're barely keeping even. Let's give it a couple more minutes. H2K usually spikes from 15 to 20 minutes pretty hard as well. We've been tracking those stats. Uh, It'll be rough because there's a lot of pressure coming out of Origin. They only have one tank, remember. If if one fight goes badly, it can go badly really quickly, especially with Sivir being, you know, providing so much speed. 
Mm -hmm. See what they do here. Again, mid lane focus can be where they go after this because Kasing and Yarnin are hell-bent on pushing in this bottom tower. They've got a decent-sized minion wave at their backs. Oduwamne continuing to keep it pushing for H2K on the top as well. That will allow H2K to then direct their attention towards the mid, but they're pinging for help already. They know that tower's days are numbered. Yeah, just some deep vision coming in for Miffy here. They basically want to surround the mid lane with vision on both flanks so they can safely push in this tower. Getting this tower will mean a lot for Origin because it will open up the map and allow them to roam and make more picks. Secure it up, no problem. Meanwhile, up in the top, Odo Omni's gonna flash, but he's still stunned up by Mithy. Neils chasing him down, and he should be able to secure it as Amazing had him locked up. Meanwhile, back to the mid, Peke goes in, Lulex goes down, but so does Peke. There were way too many members of H2K there. Yeah, and going back on that top lane play, and really smart by Miffy, he sends out the Annie Q that will follow its target regardless whether it flashes or not, and then land a stun. If you tibbers, it can get dodged. If you use a W, it can get dodged. But if you just wait for the Q to connect, then you can guarantee the CC. But they're going out of mid lane. Speaking of tibbers, Yarnin, the rest of the team took a lot of it. Spell Shield will keep him alive for a few more moments, but Soaz is still able to burn him down. Oh, poor Yarnin, his flash is almost up. He could have maybe escaped that if he had his flash, but good cooldown tracking and good good aggression from Origin. I said this before, I really want him to get more aggressive against H2K. Don't play that slow passive style, and they're doing it per perfectly so far. Mm -hmm. And counter-aggressive too. They knew that H2K was going to push after they took Peke down in that mid. They were very prompt to react to it. So far, yes, they've given up a couple of towers. That one on the bottom really didn't matter too much for them because now they have a bit of a free farm lane. Peke's going to be able to clean that one up. Oduwamna just picking up some CS here. Uh, H2K basically all base. They're coming out of the base, seeing what they're going to do on the map. Yeah, it's getting rough. So much pressure coming out of Origin. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer the game goes on, though, for H2K, in the mid lane especially, Ryu will start to look better and better, and Peke will, will start to be a little bit less relevant. But there's still a long time before that happens. And as you mentioned, they really only have one true tank. So Peke just can continue to try and pick people off, and it'll get pretty scary for a while for H2K. I feel like they, they have to, while they are playing well and aggressive, they have to respect that. Yeah, they have to be really scared for a lot of picks. At the same time, Niels is farming up a storm. 157 CS, four kills, Blade of the Rune King, Zeal, Boots. And yeah, Cloak finished already. He's he's gonna be so strong so quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not something Yarnin will be able to match very well at all. They really need a wombo combo to try and take that. But again, if they check too heavy into Origin, there's always that threat of the Tibbers. And then it has been, as we've seen, Niels just cleaning house. Yeah, a lot of threats on Origin. The Rumble, look at Soas, but he always has Leandris finished with the Sorcerers. He does a lot of damage, Niels does a lot of damage, Pekka does a lot of damage, even Miffy does a lot of damage for his support. Here. Yeah, Whoa. damage everywhere. Yeah, tower goes down, there's an Equalizer. Lulex is going to have to move away, and Peke has him in his sights. Can he pick him off? The wild chase through the jungle commences. The hate spikes will do nothing to Peke. As after the chains hit, it was all over. Yeah, and they see Kassim on the bot lane, desperate for some farm, but it, it leaves the rest of the map in a 4v5 and very little engaged. And Origin has the freedom to play around because they, they it's hard for H2K to catch Origin. The only person that can really do it is Oduwamne, or they can group up with the Sivir. But in a man down situation, Origin has the freedom to basically make enemies jungle their own. Exactly what they're doing. They utilize that jungle path to make moves towards the mid lane. Already tower half the health down. They know Kasten's in the There's area. They're trying to get out of there. There is the on the hunt. Oduwamne, the chains do not connect on him from Peke, but the explosive cast will push them back. And now up in the top, Niels continues the work and they just keep haranguing this H2K squad. A good disengage here. Ryu trying to get the slow on Peke, but he, ah. he goes back in. Wow, all right. Not sure if that was the best decision Peke has made today, but. I don't think HDK really expected it. Meanwhile, Oda Wamne now targeted down. The tower is still doing some work, but Oda will finally evaporate. Niels jumped on by Lulex. Does he have the damage condemned against the wall? Yes, he does. Niels is unstoppable, and he gets some help from Mithy, while Soaz is chasing Ryu back. This tower should be Yarnin's gone. Going down and too. so is Yarnin. Goodbye. Good night. Fantastic kiting by Niels. He basically almost gets caught there. He says, nope, the JPEG. He tumbles out, condemns into the wall, and basically kills them one by one by one, because there's not enough damage on H2K's side. And they just high five themselves into death. So now four members down. Origin are able to take that tower quite easily. Back, they can spend their gold. Speaking of, look at that difference, Crepo. Oh, 7,000 gold all of a sudden. Origin is basically, it, the, their, their foot's on the gas pedal right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. It's, it's just insane Let's what they've been able again. to do. Let's take a look at this. You're right. 
They're going on Neils, he takes some damage, he's tanking. Tumbles upwards, away from enemies. His only escape has left now, flashes out. Luix flashes after him, tumbles for an angle on the Condemn, gets him into the wall, and Kasing just doesn't have the damage to follow up. He's not an Annie player. Double stun by Miffy, really vital there too. Keeping Kasing busy, Neils slices up with that laser of the Ruin King. Fantastic play. And then Yarn just should never have been there at that point. So it was all over. So Origin, they go back, they spend that massive amount of gold they've got. They're setting up for Dragon here. Look at that difference between the mid laners. I wanted to touch on it once again because Ryu has just been effectively gimped on items this game. Now Peke in some trouble, but he's still a Blanc. Should be able to get out. And now Niels is in. Oh, they just want to go for it. He's confident. Now coming in from Soas. They won't even need him right now as the rest of the team is there. One, two, and three. They peel the bark off the tree and they can take Dragon for free. Yeah, and this is why I love Xpeke as a player. He's basically, he's getting chased by two players, right? And then he spots Evelyn, and instead of distortioning out again, he says, nah, I'm just gonna chain you and walk away. He, he goes aggressive while being defensive, and that's a mark of a fantastic player like Xpeke. He doesn't just want to get out of there, he wants to trade efficient damage in the meanwhile, and this allows Niels to come in, so as with the teleport, and they clean up a fight where the other teams may have just ran. Fantastic player and a fantastic score. 5-1-2 and two on the LeBlanc, 5-0-6. For the vein, and what does H2K have right now? A one and one Kasten that has been starved for gold this entire game. It is not looking good for this team. Yeah, you can say that much. I really don't would, wouldn't want to be in H2K's position right now. 16 to 4, three dragons, the makings of really good vision to bait the Baron, potentially just do the Baron. Oh, Origin in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Ask the question, you know, Origin, they look really great on paper. They blazed through the Challenger series last split, but they really were not tested so much. I feel like this game, in theory, was the test, but look at that goal difference versus time. Look at what they've done this game. It feels like they're still cruising at a speed that they control. Yeah, they're definitely snowballing this game. And something I've, I've noticed a lot about some of these players, they adapt to the level of their opponents. Miffy, you know, you meet him sometimes in solo queue, he, does, he doesn't take it all too serious, but once you face him against an actually really good support lane, a good AD carry, he adapts to that level and he transcends and he plays so much better. Does Miffy know how to play Bard? Miffy does. He knows how to play any champion. He's all really right. good. It's a good answer. But my Bard's better. Okay. We'll see if he uh, takes the challenge sometime later in this split. For meanwhile, Origin, they're setting up. Can we keep some vision on that Baron? But look look at Origin yesterday against, yesterday against Giants, and look at Origin today against the top three teams in the European LCS Spring Split H2K. They look much, much better. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Like the, It's very spot on to say that they're playing to their opponents because H2K are a fantastic squad. Giants, they made a lot more mistakes. H2K punished those kinds of mistakes very well. And Origin, they've just been very, very... Uh, they've shored up those those holes in their play from yesterday. And I don't know if that's a one-off or if they're just really leveling up now, or if it is true, they just play to the level of their opponents. But right now, they're not giving an inch to H2K, and this is where it's gotten hurt. Yeah, Origin in prime position to go 2-0 in their opening week, and that's definitely what they want. They, they're new to the split, so if they want to make two worlds, they have to finish pretty much top three and... Well on track so far. Mm -hmm. Number one would guarantee them that particular position, and I think that's what they're looking to shoot for. So far, a strong statement out of Origin. On the side of H2K, just scrambling to try and stay alive in this game. Three dragons to zero is that scoreline. You take a look at the way the items are across the board, and it's just still painting a grim picture for H2K. Yeah, Kasing is desperately trying to finish Mikhail's Crucible to get out of the CC, but at this point, it doesn't matter whether you break the CC because the damage alone will just straight up kill your team. Blue Lex. Prowling he needs around. to steal this. He has to be able to, but he Peke scouting. doesn't quite have flash up. He's going in. The Tibbers is on him. They turn their attention, and the solo mission is a failure. Baron is going down. Origin has everything, and they're back into base. Yeah, without flash or added distraction from the other H2K members, it's very unlikely that Eve will just be allowed to walk in, not against an Origin that's playing as well as they're playing today. Not at all. Absolutely flawless performance from them. So as goes down to clear out the wave on bottom. H2K, they've got no pressure anywhere on the map, really. They maybe can use the top wave that they've got pushing Odoamne, trying to push this one out. But still, it's going to be a long time before they can do much against this squad. Yeah, and Pekka's even picking up uh, an Elixir here because he's on three items already. Look at me, Zonias and Run of Ages. Compared to Ludzeko, Abyssal Scepter, and Morella Nomic on Sword Shoes. Just popped his Elixir. Peke is making his lead even bigger with this short spike, and he uses that power, he invests that power to get even more gold and snowball his lead even farther. Origin is not sitting back. They want to drive this victory home in the next seven minutes.
Yeah. One thing that you could say of a lot of teams uh, in the lower parts of the bracket in the LCS, European LCS last split was just that they had trouble closing games out. This is clearly not an origin problem. They know what to do in this situation. They know how to take well, the lead. Let's, and let's to get ahead of ourselves. But they're not done yet. You're right. It's not over yet, but they are knocking at the door. Yeah, Vayne. When a Vayne is allowed to do that much tower on a single wave, you know you're in trouble. So, so super short range when, when amazing When your jungler is just tanking the turret laser, yeah, you're definitely in trouble. So They have to give this up. They have to give the inhibitor up. It's just falling way too fast. Another minute and a half till the next dragon. Origin can easily stroll that direction whenever they want and leisurely okay. pick it up as easy as possible. Ryu is health bar. Where'd it go? He Cast has to go back to base at this point. I think this could be another inhibitor. Yeah, Kassan, traditionally the anti-mage gets dropped to 40% HP on a single combo from Xpeke here. This tower is likely going down. I think we'll see a panicking Jake coming out from H2K once this tower hits 50% or something. They have to try something. They do indeed. Baron buff still empowering those minions. So Origin can push just a little bit longer. Look for the Righteous Glory Silver ulti. If they're gonna do something, it's right now. Yeah, well, and there it goes. The Equalizer gets thrown down, though, and H2K's health bars are evaporating. A very big barrel separates H2K as Ryu throws down the Zhonya's. Desperation move on to Niels. It doesn't work. It's just not enough. And Origin, with three kills, will get another in him and set their sights on the Nexus. Again, fantastic caddy by Niels. Somehow, amongst all of that, he manages to stay alive, and Origin is looking to close out this game immediately. Teleport on the tippers, Soaz says, I'm gonna end this game in style. Clear through the last of the minions. Peke causing havoc to Yarnin in the back. They're looking to end it right now. And under 28 minutes, Origin have thundered to a 2-0 start in the LCS Summer Split. Yeah, Mithi and Neil's definitely very happy there. So us going on for the, the good old LCS group hug. But yeah, fantastic play by Origin. Honestly, did not expect him to play this well. No, I, I think after their performance against Giants yesterday, there were still some open questions. Would they be able to compete with the team that very convincingly took the third place in the spring split? And that answer is a resounding yes. We've been hyping Neil's 7-0-8 on Vayne. Didn't die a single time basically carry the game alongside Soas and Peke, but definitely star performance for Nielsen. Mm -hmm. In a league where AD carries shine, where we, the likes of Forgiven, Reckles get a lot of praise, fees, even Niels, I think he's definitely going to fit in. And yeah. it just shows why people were, back in the day when Niels barely joined Origin, he was he was rumored to uh, be in line for the Fnatic spot. Now we see why, because he's a fantastic AD carry. Absolutely. You know, and, and against some of these very, very strong squads, they'll still have their work cut out for them, but for now, what an incredible performance they against have... a very good team. They just did not give them an opening. Yeah, they have some breathing room. They're 2-0 in the LCS, best record they could hope for. Mm -hmm. They can afford to slip up a couple of times, and uh, they're well on their way for playoffs, but the way they're playing right now, they, they want number one. I, I don't think they're going to be resting on their laurels anytime soon. See them all crowding around. Yeah, who did the miss damage? Who I didn't lose damage. I, I, no, 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 that was me. Remember that double kill? Yeah, yeah. Oh god! A bit of that 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 vein performance was absolutely fantastic. But I, I do feel like, yeah, H2K they focus very heavily on on trying to keep the mid down a little bit. Just didn't do anything. <laughs> and there's so there's uh, so with the baguette. Ah, some top quality banter. Tasty bread, man. I love baguettes. I do too. Not gonna lie. They're bad for you though. Yeah, it's carbo. It's all carbs. Get enough energy. You can carry like so. That. You need energy with games like this. Mm -hmm. Production, get me a baguette. <laughs> A really big one. <laughs> yes, indeed. Not the petite one. But yeah, going back to the, going back to the game. Let's let's see where where did it go wrong for uh, for H two K. And I think looking at Lulex, he sp I think he spent too much time top. It's really hard in this double ranged uh, lane on the top lane without an engaged opponent on your support. When the lane's this close to your tower, I don't think he should have been ganking there because mm -hmm. we saw afterwards he ganked Soas in the bot lane and that worked. And I would like repeat ganks on the bot lane to get Oruam snowballing because we saw how good H two K is once Oruam gets going on that Maokai and. Yeah. yeah, it didn't it didn't really work out that time. I, I, I agree. I think they could have forced maybe the uh, the swap down from Origin a little bit sooner too, and that might have freed them up to take an early tower top, then contest more dragons. And, you know, the whole game may have shaken out differently if that had been the case. I really feel like his very early game on Evelyn was quite good. He, he went Warrior Enchant as well, which is a little bit different than what we've been seeing Diamond Prox, you know, in his, in his less successful attempt when Magus. Um, it's tricky. When, it's, once yeah, once you get behind with Warrior, you get blown up immediately. But the, the thing is, if you look at Sivir, right? Sivir Janna, really safe lane, can farm. A lot of utility, disengage from Janna. 
no fight potential. Sivir is a utility AD carry, and the reason she's so strong in other regions is because it allows the jungle to, to snowball the mid lane and the top lane. Ryu was definitely under pressure there. Expeke and Amazing did a phenomenal job basically camping Ryu, mm -hmm. forcing his flash, killing him again, forcing him out of lane every time he loses some CS. 5 CS here, 6 CS here, 3 CS here, and Pekka just snowballs the lead, and then that frees up Pekka. He can go left, he can go right, but more pressure on the other lanes, and H2K just, they ran out of breathing room, and they just got yeah. forced into their towers, and then yeah, Origin playing a nice roam style, Miffy joining in as well, didn't spend all his time in lane, Really good resource management from Origin. Yeah, and, and really good map awareness, too, and yeah. knowing what pressure points to hit. I, I do, did think it was very strange that H2K neglected Ryu so much, yeah. considering, you know, casting against LeBlanc does not have the easiest time in lane, and, and facing down someone like Peke, that's a daunting task in and of itself. And I just feel like H2K could have done a lot more to take the pressure off him in the early game and help him get to a better mid. Casting in against LeBlanc is fine if it's a slow 1v1 matchup, because LeBlanc will never have enough damage to one-shot you, so it basically becomes a sustained war. Just trickle each other down, and eventually you base, and then you come back. But you get to level 6, you get to your items, that's fine. But once Amazing joins the fray, he starts joining in, Body Slam Flash, Jungler gladly trades his flash for mid lane if he can return later without any pressure. And Lulex, he found Amazing in the jungle, but all he could do was watch and say, like, Yo, goodbye, Amazing, you know, run out of my jungle. But he could never really kill him. And that was a problem for H2K. Too little offensive threat, especially in the early game. I'm going to reiterate, I think with a utility AD carry like Sivir, you don't need Janna. You want more power on support. You want more, more things happening. But two support bands turn out in favor for, uh, for Origin here. Yep. Well, that was all... That had Don't to be done. Vote. Origin managed to grab that one in convincing style, and we're going to go ahead and send it.